Welcome to our five part series on the Smart Enclosure System. This is part three, the three tiers of the Smart Enclosure System. So now we take the principles we've been discussing and look to apply them to our enclosure assemblies using a framework of the three tiers. The three tiers of the Smart Enclosure System are guideposts to help architects, engineers, and consultants better understand the general effectiveness of their efforts at making a more sustainable building. The three tiers are not precise demarcations of success, but indicate a general direction of improvement compared to each other and to typical industry practice, which we describe as the standard high-performance default approach. We don't doubt there is room for debate about particulars, but the direction we need to go is clear. To illustrate the three tiers, we use common two by stick framing as the initial points of reference and then apply the basic principles across assembly types, adapting them as appropriate. For all the assembly types we address, see part four of this series. So again, we start with the industry standard high performance default approach. It is one with spray foam and board foam. It has a relatively high level of embodied carbon and has no significant carbon sequestration. It is high in toxicity and has less resilience in terms of maintaining high levels of moisture safety and air tightness. Any carbon savings realized through operational energy efficiency will be unable to offset the embodied carbon produced during the construction before the critical window of 2050. In other words, the building will be adding to the problem of climate change for more than 30 years. While the ambitions of this default construction are sincere, they are executed using the wrong toolbox and are creating more problems than solutions. So then we look at tier one, which modifies this common construction practice at a seemingly superficial level, yet fundamentally transforms what it's capable of. It utilizes two by framing with plywood sheathing, wood fiber board, and wood dense pack insulations. Inboard, an airtight smart vapor retarder and Tello Plus membrane is installed with a service cavity. Outboard, airtight and vapor open monolithic weather resistant barrier Solitex Mento or wind tight wood fiber board by Gutex is provided with a back vented rain screen protecting them. These simple shifts from plastic insulations to wood with systematic air tightness and vapor control drastically change the performance in all categories, creating a healthier, more durable, carbon negative enclosure that directly addresses the needs of our climate at the outset and for the life of the building. So next for tier two, what we would consider an improvement on tier one is to then go sheathingless. The sheathing really isn't needed. Sheathing is a historic artifact based on habit and tradition. With diagonal bracing, the wood Gutex insulation board can act as a WRB and outboard wind tight layer. For temporary weather protection, you can wrap the framing in a Solitex Mento airtight WRB before applying the insulation board. The inboard air and vapor control and outboard back vented rain screens are similar to Tier 1. Tier 2 removes not only the sheathing material, but also the labor associated with installing it and makes this assembly even more robust and resilient. Tier 3 then further reduces layers and complexity while providing greater future flexibility and in so doing makes it more robust and optimized. This approach is a direct descendant of the Persist Enclosure developed by the National Research Council Canada. Like Tier 2, Tier 3 has no sheathing and now the wood fiber based insulation is moved entirely outboard of the framing with a back vented rain screen exterior finish. Before installing the Gutex wood fiber board insulation, be sure to install the airtight smart vapor retarder and WRB in Tello X. This can be the simplest, lowest carbon, most robust and healthiest assembly. This general approach of the three tiers of first modifying common practice, then simplifying and finally optimizing can then be applied to a range of common building assembly types for both retrofits and new builds. And that's where we're going to go next. See you in part four, the assemblies.